ask you a question. Anybody ever been on a cruise? Everybody been on a cruise? Great vacation, right? You pay them fun, they take your money, and you can go on a board, they can drink, you can go eat all you want, go to destinations. Now, my question is, when you get on a cruise ship, what is the first thing a captain does before they disembark? Anybody know? Let's start a mustard drill. Okay? A mustard drill is a drill where the captain orders the entire crew to get passengers all in designated areas to give them a regulated and man mandatory, mandated and regulated drill to let them know where the safety and the life vests are. They're telling you this is where the life vests are, this is how you put it on before they leave. They're giving you the awareness that this is what's going to save your life. Now that drill is very important and it became mandated ever since 1912. 1912, the Titanic did something that was unthinkable. It became the, known as the unsinkable ship, but it did the unthinkable back in 1912. Two, 2,044 passengers went out on the Titanic. 705 came back. 705. And the reason why is because it was a blatant disregard for the amount of safety precautions or protocols that they had on the ship for the amount of passengers they had on the ship. So because of that, as a result of that, passengers died. A worse stat than that a worse stat is that the passengers were all segregated into three different classes. First class, second class, third class. First class were the most privileged, more fortunate passengers. Second class was good. Third class were the less privileged. Now, when this boat started to sink, unfortunately, the third class was captive. They held them captive from any kind of life-saving devices. First class was able to board the lifeless or the lifeboats. The second after. As a result of that, the third class, there were four times as many deaths in the fourth class than there were in the first class. Third, three times as many as the second class. Now I say that's unfair. Everybody's in the same boat, yet there's more privilege for the more privileged. And that's unfortunate. So, because of that, <clears throat> because of that, I'm thinking, this is where I need help. I need voices. I need your voices as educators. I need your voices as teachers. We need to somehow talk to our congressmen, which I've done. We have to talk to our senators, talk to our governors, our representatives, maybe the president. We need to find a way to put vests in schools. Because vests in schools, if they're mandated in schools, we may save lives. If vests are somewhere that are accessible to teachers, giving them out to children, then at that point, we may say lots. If it were up to me, there would be vests. I call them life vests. There would be life vests in every classroom. If there's 30 kids, there's 32 vests. To accommodate every kid. There isn't one more that's more privileged than the other. They should have all the same safety abilities, opportunities. Teachers should have one first and foremost. Goes up to me. Teachers and faculty and school staff would all have that because you guys take on confrontation every day. We're not even talking about the active shooter, but you go and there's a confrontation outside. Guess what? The first person that uh, a child wants to a teacher who can break this up. Yet you guys lack the equipment to go out and do that. You put your lives on the line, like I said before, you put your lives on the line, you're the captains of the classroom, right? So you say, hey, I gotta do this, I gotta deal with the situation. Yet our police officers, every time they deal with a confrontation, guess what? They have the best. 
They have to put it. They deal with these situations. Our teachers are teachers. Our faculty is faculty. And unfortunately, we don't provide that to you. And that is unacceptable. Because you deal with that on a daily basis. You guys should have a workplace that is safe, if not more safe than any other workplace. Now, my question is to you again, let me go back to the crews. Uh, show of hands, if you guys were given a crew, we said, hey, we're going to have a cruise today, and you guys are going to be able to go on a cruise, how many you guys got? Everybody, right? Now, the disclaimer is, there isn't one life vest on this cruise ship. There isn't one safety device on this cruise ship. I mean, we go. That's my understanding. It's good to know when you have something, but when it's not there, it's another situation. You think twice about it. And you guys deserve that. Well, the unfortunate part of having not having the proper equipment and having to deal with such certain situations, our engagement of this educational system is that good teachers start to leave. And our kids suffer because we don't have those good teachers to teach them how to be good teachers because that's our that's our future, right? I mean, we love teachers to live forever, but sometimes they retire. That's what you look forward to. So if we don't have good teachers to teach other students to be good teachers, then those students don't become teachers, and then what happens to our education system? Who's going to teach those kids? Who's going to teach our future kids? That, my friends, that is an actual purpose. That's a natural purpose because if our education system is on a decline, if our education system fails, this country fails, you guys are the backbone. The teachers, educators, administrators out there, you are the backbone of this country. You have to know that. There's nothing more important now in this world. I mean, there's a lot of things out there. There's sports, there's athletes, there's all. But our teachers are the ones that teach them how to be better. To be adults. To run this country. And I think we fail to do that once we get somewhere in a in, in society where, 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 where we're successful. We forget that. We forget about where we came from. 